Uh, welcome everyone to our communion meditation and scripture reading today. And um, our scripture reading from the Old Testament is from Psalms uh, 51, verses 10 and 12. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from thy presence, and do not take the Holy Spirit from me. Restore in me the joy of thy salvation, and, the salva and sustain me with a willing spirit. What a, a wonderful expression of thought in uh, words. So, And our uh, New Testament reading is from Mark 2, chapter 2. Verses 16 and 17, and it says this, And when the scribes and Pharisees saw that he, that is Jesus, was eating with sinners and tax gatherers, they began saying to his disciples, Why is he eating, with, eating and drinking with tax gatherers and sinners? And Jesus, hearing this, said to them, It is not those who are healthy who need a physician but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. <clears throat> and I could just see Jesus turning to him and, and saying that. And uh, his word has surprised us many times. But uh, <clears throat> my communion meditation may not be the traditional type you would expect, but my goal is always to encourage you, not only in the Word of God and Christ, but also in the power of His resurrection. So, <clears throat> uh, some time ago, <clears throat> I was reading in the book of Joshua, and uh, I was fascinated by the story of Rahab the harlot. And uh, Rahab was a woman who was spared along with all her household um, when Joshua and his farming or fighting men captured the city of Jericho. Many of you, I'm sure, know the story. How she hid the two <coughs> men Joshua had sent uh, to the city of Jericho to spy out the whole land, and she hid them from the king. And... Uh, because she feared God and hid Joshua's spies from the king of Jericho, the two spies swore an oath with her. And um, that uh, if she didn't expose them uh, to the king, that uh, her father's household, her whole household, would be spared when they invaded the city. See, um, she knew... Um, she knew what was going to happen because she told the, the spies, she says, hey, I'm dealing kindly with you. We know, um, we know what you did to the kings on the other side of the Jordan, and we heard about how God dried up the Red Sea for you to cross when you came out of Egypt. So <clears throat> uh, they swear the oath with her, and they told her, well, <clears throat> hang up. A scarlet ribbon from your window because her house was on the city wall and everyone in your household will be spared. But if you break this promise and expose us, then we're free of the oath. So she sent them out another way so the king's men wouldn't capture them. And Rahab was justified because she believed God and her kindness to the spies was a sign of that faith. And I'm going to read <clears throat> a little bit from Joshua. If you uh, uh, I encourage you to go to the book of Joshua and read this story, it's uh, pretty enlightening. But I'm going to read from <clears throat> uh, chapter 6, verse 23 through 25, uh, that tells uh, when she was rescued. So the young men <coughs> who were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father's house, her father and her mother, 
and her brothers and all she had, they also brought out all her relatives and placed them outside the camp of Israel. And they burned the city with fire and all that was in it, only the silver and gold and articles of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. However, Rahab the harlot and her father's household and all she had, Joshua spared, and she has lived in the midst of Israel to this day, for she hid the messengers when Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. There's, um, and here as I could tell, there's eight references to uh, Rahab in the Bible, three in the New Testament. And I'm going to read a couple of them <coughs> uh, from Hebrews chapter 11:31. It says this about her: By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish along with those who were disobedient, after she had welcomed the spies in peace. And in James 2:25, it says this: And in the same way was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? So my question is this, if Rahab was justified by faith, leading to her kindness and good works, how much more are we justified by faith in the body and blood of the one Jesus Christ? We were baptized into Christ, or justified by faith in the body and blood of Christ, which has provided this place of grace that we stand in. As we take the bread and the cup, let us remember always the body and blood of Christ that was given up for us all as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a pleasant aroma. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Sovereign God, we thank you for this place of grace that you've provided for us. We thank you that you sent your Son to die for our sins, the sins of all men, not just our own. As we receive your body and blood, remind us not only in our minds and our hearts, but in our actions, to love God and do what is right and acceptable in our whole life, in all we do. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, amen.